Wow, the Wall of Fame with all of Dr. Romano's students from years past. Oh, I think I'd see Dr. Romano. Dr. Romano, I was looking at the pictures of all your students from years past. Uh-oh, what are you doing here? How are you? I want to go over a question with you today that involves ether cleavage. So let's have a look. Okay, Dr. Romano. In the first example, I'm going to take cyclopentanol and I'm going to treat it with NaOH. So we remove the acidic proton and we convert it into a nucleophile. Easy enough. Then we do a simple SN2 and there's the attack. And as you guys can see from here, what I, what I first do is I get the ether. So that's known as a Williamson ether synthesis. Then what I'm going to do is treat it with excess HBr. And what that's going to do, it's going to cut it on both sides of the O, and you're going to get cyclopentyl bromide and methyl bromide. So, as you can see, you end up with two halides. And the logic behind it is you would protonate this first with the acid, and then the Br would come in, the Br would come in, attack the smaller side, to give you the alcohol and the halide, and then the alcohol would protonate again, and you would do the same step. So you're gonna remember, when you cleave an ether, and there's excess strong acid, you're gonna end up with two halides. Now, here's a more complicated example. We have one naphthol. First step is the same. You treat it with NaH, and you generate your nucleophile. Then you do your Williamson. The Williamson synthesis is straightforward. We're just going to do a simple SN2, and we get the ether. Once we get the ether, we treat it with HBr. But be careful, the oxygen is directly attached to the benzene ring. So that means that when you cut it, you're going to get the halide. But yeah. if the alcohol is attached to a benzene ring, it stays put. And these are going to be your two products. The logic behind that is this. When you protonated the alcohol... Just like you did before, you attack the smaller one and you do an SN2. Now, normally, you would protonate this and attack it again. But you can't protonate this. It wouldn't do anything. What would it do? If it went by an SN2, there's no way you're going to do a backside attack. And secondly, you're not going to form a carbocation on an aromatic ring. So therefore, you end up with the OH directly attached to the ring. So as you can see, the answer I was looking for is you get an alcohol and you get a halide. But usually you get two halides, but not if it's attached to an aromatic ring. I hope that helps and gives you a good understanding of how to do an ether. You may thank me for this question someday. Dr. Armani, you got me again. I got it all wrong. Well, that's nothing new. Good day to you. I'm going to study more, Dr. Armani. Good day to you, sir. Good day.